God is greater than our challenges, our calamities, our complexities. Do not speak hopelessness or despair because you are not forgotten by God and your case has not been overlooked by God. Know who your God is. Know what He can make happen in and through you. Wait on the Lord. Let's turn in our Bibles, please, to Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah chapter 40, we'll read um, the last few verses from Isaiah chapter 40. This morning, the message is very simple, a very simple word that uh, I want to bring to us. I just feel that God would want us to hear this morning, Isaiah chapter 40. We are going to read verses 25 to 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 25 to 31. You know, sometimes we just need to be reminded Sometimes just of the very simple things. And so this morning, I just want to remind us something very simple yet very important. God is greater. Amen? We all go through situations in life. We all go through difficulties, challenges, ups and downs. I mean, all of us uh, go through it at various points in time and yet in the midst of all that we need to remind ourselves God is greater amen God is greater and sometimes uh, we just need a reminder hey God is greater and that's all we want to do this morning just remind us God is greater than what you're going through, what I'm going through, what each one of us may be going through in life. And so how do we translate that truth into our daily experience is what we're going to look at. And so Isaiah chapter 40, verses 25 to 31 will help us do that this morning. God says here, verse 25, To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name. By the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my gods. Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So verse 25, Isaiah says, you know, our God is so great. There are no words. There are no measuring systems that can describe. The greatness of God. To whom will you liken me? To what would you make me an equal? I mean, there is no measuring tape that can measure God. No weighing scale that can weigh the greatness of God. To whom? Our words are absolutely insufficient to describe the greatness of our God. So great He is. To whom will you liken me? To 
who would you consider me to be an equal? Nothing. No one. Amen? So tell a neighbor, our God is greater. Amen? And so the next verse he says, you know, maybe something that can give us some understanding of the greatness of our God is if you look at his creation. So he says in verse 26, you know, look at creation. Look at it. Lift up your eyes on high. You look at all these things. Who created these things? He brings their hosts out by number. He calls them by name. And this is in some way communicating to us the greatness of his might, the strength of his power. I mean, look at this universe. And cosmologists tell us this universe is increasing. I mean, it didn't stop. It is increasing. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And according to their understanding, it's going to continue like this into eternity. So, you know, sometimes we think, I don't know if you've ever thought, but God, you know, why didn't you just create one planet, one earth, one sun, one moon? It's enough. I mean, why all this? Why all this universe that is so vast, we don't even know how vast it is. And it is increasing. It's, it's going on. Oh, why? Maybe for one reason. At least that will in some way communicate to us the, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. It's like, look, that's how infinite I am. God is. Amen. Our God is so so God is great. Tell your neighbor, my God is great. Come on, tell it like you really believe it. My God is really great. My God is greater. Amen. So then in the next verse, he's addressing God's people. So he says in verse 27, God is so great. Why do you say now, Jacob and Israel simply means God's people. Okay, it's referring to God's people. So God's people, why are you speaking like this? Why are you saying, my way is hidden from God? That means God can't see me. My way is hidden from God. Excuse me, don't talk like that. Don't say my God can't see me. Why do you say, oh Jacob, why do you speak like this, oh Israel? Why do you say, my way is hidden from God? Don't talk like that. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Amen. Your way is not hidden from God. It's not like God's forgotten you. So tell your neighbor, my God has not forgotten me. Amen. His eye is on you. So don't say, my way is hidden from God. God can't see me. No. He is so great. In fact, he calls all of them by name. His greatness, his understanding is unsearchable. And he has not forgotten you. Your way is not hidden from God eyes on you. So why do you say, and he continues in verse 27, my case has been overlooked by God. What does it mean by my case? Meaning your situation. What your circumstance, what you, where you want God to intervene. My case. Why do you say, my case has been overlooked by God. Don't talk like that. So let's say it in the positive Let's say, my case has not been overlooked by God. See, he doesn't forget your case. Or he doesn't forget your situation, your circumstance. He doesn't. 
So don't speak like that. Don't speak hopelessness. Don't speak despair. Because in the next verse, he says, see, this is who our God is. Verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? I mean, don't forget this. Know this. Remember this. The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he never faints. He does not grow tired. And his understanding is unsearchable. Say, hey, God is so great. He never faints. He doesn't get tired. And he doesn't forget. His understanding is infinite. What does that mean to you and me? That means when your case comes up, he doesn't say, sorry man, I had a great, I had a, I had a long day yesterday. Today I'm tired. He doesn't faint. He doesn't grow weary. His understanding is infinite. He remembers you. Yeah. Our systems run out of memory, not God's. Amen. His understanding is unsearchable, it's infinite. I, I remember your case. You are before me. He doesn't forget it. This is our God. His greatness is unsearchable. His understanding is infinite. He doesn't faint. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't run out of power and strength to intervene in your life situation, in your circumstance. He doesn't. But in fact, what does he do? Verse 29. Instead, it says here, he gives power to the weak. Hey, you and I are the ones who are weak and God imparts power to us. He gives us the power we need. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. He is so great. He's infinite in his power and his understanding. We are the ones, we are the ones, you know, who run out of energy, who run out of strength, who get weak, who get tired. But this verse is saying, verse 29, God gives power. God comes into your circumstance. God comes into your situation. He says, I will strengthen you. I will give you the power you need. I will give you what you need to keep going. So much so that he says in the next verse, in verse 30, even the youth shall faint. The young men will utterly fail, meaning... In the natural, people are going to run out of strength, run out of power. But there is going to be this people to whom God is giving his power, whom God is giving his strength. These people, they will not run out of power and strength. Amen? And that's you and me. But then he gives us the secret in verse 31. Those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. Their strengths will be renewed to the point where they can mount up with wings like eagles. You can rise above your storm. You can rise above your circumstance. You can rise above your challenges because God renews your strength. Those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. The young men will utterly faint. But you will run and run and run and run and run and not get weary. Because you've been empowered by God. You will walk and not faint because you've been empowered by God. Amen. So Isaiah in this passage is translating for us. The greatness of our God and how that affects you and me in everyday life. And I just want to remind us of certain things here in view of the greatness of God. God is greater than the challenges we face today. Some of us sitting here, maybe in the middle of life's challenges. Maybe the biggest of challenges you've ever faced. But God is greater. Amen? 
So let's say that together. God is greater than the challenges I face. I don't know what the challenges are. Sometimes we have to face Goliaths. Sometimes we have to face some mountains in our way. Sometimes we have to go through some valleys. Sometimes we have to go through some dark nights. Whatever the challenges are. We all have that at different moments in life. But whatever your challenge is, God is greater than those challenges. Every mountain can be moved. Every valley can be lifted. Every dark night can be turned to noonday. God can do it. God is greater. So don't say in the middle of your challenges, my way is hidden from God. God forgot me. Don't say, my case has been overlooked. Don't speak like that. You are God's. God is for you. He's greater. And he will empower you in the midst of your challenges. God is greater than our mistakes and the mess we've created for ourselves. You know, for some of us, we are responsible. Right? Hey, we've messed up. I don't think there's anybody who's gone through life without ever making a mistake. Who's been on target on every decision. No, look, we've all made mistakes. But God is greater than our mistakes. He's greater than our mess that we put ourselves in. There is no problem that is so complex that God can't unravel. Now you and I may not figure out the way. You and I may not be able to, you know, comprehend a solution to the problem that we find ourselves in. But it is not too big for God. God is greater. Amen. So let's say that together. God is greater. Than my mistakes. Or my mess. Now this is not a reason to go and make mistakes. Or create a mess. But look. If you have made mistakes. If you are in a, a mess that you have created for yourself. Don't get discouraged. God is bigger. God is greater than that. There is no situation too complex. That he can't unravel. No pain too deep that he cannot heal. There are no scars he cannot remove. He's the one who gives beauty for the ashes we've created for ourselves. He's the one who turns our mourning into dancing. Our God is greater. Our God is greater than all the time we wasted and let slip away. For some of us, that's our problem. You know, December of the year comes by. And, oh, it's December. What happened to the year? It's come by. And sometimes it happens for a few years before we wake up and we realize time is gone. And then we tend to slip into, you know, regrets. But I want us to understand that even time, this whole issue of time is not a problem for God. And, and we don't understand it, but this is what the Bible says. The Bible tells us that God is the great I am. Which means he lives in the eternal now. You, have, you and I have a yesterday. You and I have a tomorrow. God does not. God lives in the eternal now. Eternity past. Eternity future for God is the eternal now. He is the I am. For you and me, he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. But for God himself, he has no beginning. He has no end. From everlasting to everlasting, he always is. Say, Pastor, I don't understand. It doesn't matter. He says, you know, guys, I want you to know how irrelevant time is to me. A thousand, one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like one day. Go figure it. Basically, he's saying time is irrelevant to God. Because he dwells outside time. He is at our beginning and at our end at the same time. Amen. And such a great God, the Bible says, our times are in his hands. So let's say that together. My times are in his hands. 
you know, this great God to whom time is irrelevant. Your time is in his hands. Which means he can do what he wants to do with the time of your life. He can compress 10 years into 10 days. Here, take it. So God, that would have taken me 10 years to do. Yeah, I'll give it to you in 10 days. He can accelerate things in our lives to the point which shocks us. Because time is in his hands. That's why he says, The years that the locusts have eaten, I will restore to you. That means, look, the years that have been wasted away, I can bring it back. You say, God, how? Don't worry, my times are, your times are in my hands, God says. Amen. So look, all of us may have made, you know, done things in our lives. Oh my God, so much time God wasted. I wasted so much time on this. So God, I should have done this 10 years ago. I should have done this, you know, time. But God is greater. Amen. He is greater. So you take that issue of time to God. Say, God, restore to me the years that the locust has eaten. Restore to me, God, what has slipped away. God is greater. So don't live in regret. Don't live in the I should have, I could have. Sometimes when you talk to people, all they say is, I should have, could have. Don't live in that. What's gone, God can restore. Believe God is greater than the time that has slipped away from our hands. Don't live in the past. He says, do not remember the former things. God will do a new thing. And this time it will spring up. It will flourish, he says. He will make impossibilities happen. and make a highway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God is greater than the dreams that seem to elude us. You know, for some of us, we have been pursuing dreams. And it's like a butterfly. You try to catch it, here it goes there. You try to catch it, there it goes there. It's like, God, when is this dream ever going to be fulfilled? But I want to say this morning, don't give up on that dream. Don't give up because God is greater. That even that which seems to elude you, God can bring it to you. He's greater. So don't give up on that dream. If you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your hearts. He will do it. So you delight yourself in God. He is greater than all the impossibilities that that seem to keep your dream away. And, and, and you know, the doors that seem to be closed, He can open up. He can take care of the lack, the insufficiency, uh, the shortcomings you see. When He opens a door, no man can shut it, the Bible says. What He brings into your life, no man can take away. When He lifts you up, no man can put you down. When God blesses you, no man can reverse it. Amen. God is greater. God is greater than the calamities we've been struck with. Jesus said in the world, you will have tribulation. So sometimes things happen. It's not your fault. Sickness. Sometimes financial problems. Things happen. Calamities. They come. But in the middle of those calamities, you and I can say, God is greater. He's greater than the storm. He's greater than the losses. You know, some of us, I, I don't know if there's anyone here, but in the recent floods that have happened, I mean, in overnight, things are washed away. Uh, one week people had so much. Next week it's all gone. It's washed. It's, it's, it's gone. The loss is huge. 
But in the middle of that, there's one thing we can affirm. God is greater than this. It's greater. So in, in, in calamities that strike our lives, we must affirm God is greater. God is the one who, like Joseph, he gave him his Manessa. He can give you your Manessa, causing you to forget the pain. Just as God gave him his Ephraim, he can give you your Ephraim, causing you to be fruitful in the very place where you were afflicted. Our God is greater. What the devil or what people meant for evil, God can turn it around for good. God is greater. Job suffered huge losses, but he didn't know at the end of it. The Bible says, God turned all of his losses. He restored to him twice as much as he had. So the Bible says, the latter end of Job was greater than his beginning. Calamities came. So it wasn't easy. But God is greater. Amen. God is greater. What have you faced? Or what are you facing? Affirm, my God is greater. He can turn our bitter waters and make them sweet. Amen. Let's quickly mention a few more. God is greater than the abandonment of family and friends who may have forsaken us. Sometimes for some of us, that's our area of challenge. And I want to remind you this morning, God's greater than that feeling of abandonment you may, you may be uh, going through. God is greater than the hopelessness we feel about our future. For some of us, that may be the issue. Oh, my future doesn't look very promising. Looks bleak. But I want you to know God is greater than that. He's the God who's not run out of dreams for your life. He's the God who says, I will give you a hope and a future. God's greater. God's greater than and anything, everything we face. He's greater than the devil. He's greater than whatever the devil uh, has, has intended to do against you. He's greater than those things. So knowing that our God is so great, what must we do? Let's go back here and look at the instructions Isaiah gives us. I'm just going to repeat what I uh, uh, mentioned at the very beginning. Verse 27. Because God is greater, first of all, don't speak hopelessness or despair. Don't say, my way is hidden from God, or my case is forgotten by God. Don't speak like that. Your God is so great. Don't say, God has forgotten me, or God has overlooked my case. No, don't speak like that. Speak about the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the fact that God is who He said He is, that God will work in your life situations. Secondly, he says in verse 28, he says, know who your God is. He says, have you not known? Have you not heard? So don't forget who God is. He is this creator God. He is this everlasting God. He never faints. He has no shortage of power. No shortage of solutions. His understanding is unsearchable. Don't forget who God is. Then he says, the next thing, verse 29 and 30. Know what God can do in you, for you, and through you. Because he is the one who gives power to the weak. He gives strength to those who have no mind. So think in those terms. Think as a person empowered by God. Think as a person to whom God is giving strength. To whom God is giving power. Dream like that. Think like that. Because God gives power to the weak. Amen? So when I think about APC, here's what I do. When I'm praying, when I'm with God, 
I say, God, one day there will be thousands coming to APC, to all our locations. One day, God, there will be hundreds of thousands. Now you're getting scared. But that's what I do with God. God, one day, hundreds of thousands to all our locations. And God, one day, I want APC to minister to one million people in Bangalore City. That's how I talk with God. Amen? See, but pastor, you've been working 18 years. It's not happened. doesn't matter. When the time comes, it may be he needs only 18 days to do it. <laughs> doesn't matter to God. doesn't matter to God. But this is how I engage with God. Why? Because he gives power. He is the one who's coming into our situations. He is the one who's stepping into this thing. So we always have to look in terms of what God can do. Not what I can do, what you can do. Or what God can do. Amen? I say God, hundreds, thousands of churches all over India. Now, I'm not so worried about other countries. I mean, if that happens, it's okay. But for me, Bangalore, India, that's in my heart. And other nations can get off the overflow. Let them take the extras. But for me, God, Bangalore and India, that's my heart. You know, I don't fancy other traveling here and there. That's okay. We give them the extras. But God, in India, give me thousands of churches. Give me this nation. That's how I talk with God. Why? Because he gives power to the weak. Amen. He's the one stepping into our situation. So when you dream, dream from that perspective. Your dream for your life. Dream like that. Ah, what eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, what hasn't entered in the heart of man. Have those kinds of dreams for your life. So, but how can I do it? Because he gives power to the weak. He gives strength. That means he's going to work in your life. Amen? That's how he does. But then, what must we do? That's verse 31. What must we do? They that wait upon the Lord. So God is so great. He hasn't forgotten your case. He's ready to step in and give you the strength, give you the power you need. He's ready to turn things around in our lives. What must we do? They that wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. How do we wait upon the Lord? We just spend time, pray. Spend time in the word of God, reading his Bible, his words. Spend time just with him. Wait upon him. It's interesting in the Hebrew, there is one word for those many words. Those who wait upon. So English, we say, those who wait upon. Four words. Hebrew, it's one word. Kava. And the word kava simply means to be intertwined. To bind together. The picture is that of us. If you, if you have a single strand, it breaks very easily. But when you take many strands and bind them together, you have a strong rope. Can't break. That's kava. So those who wait upon simply means those who intertwine themselves with God. Those who bind themselves together with God. Jesus put it like this. I am the wine. You are the branch. If you abide in me, I abide in you, you will be very fruitful. You put it in a different language. But the idea is the same. That you and I just get connected with God. You intertwine yourself with God. You bind yourself. Wait upon the Lord. What will happen? 
our strength will be renewed. But when our strength is renewed, it actually means our strength is now coupled with <coughs> His strength. Are you understand? It doesn't mean you get more of your own strength. It means you've been now intertwined with Him. So in the renewal of your strength, it's not God gives more of your, yourself. He gives more of Himself into you. So when you walk now, you're not walking with your strength. You're walking your strength totally intertwined with His strength. That's why the Bible says you're going to mount up with wings like eagles. And you will run and not be. Your battery is not going to go out of charge now. Because it's been intertwined with an unlimited power source. So you're going to run and not be weary. You will walk and you will not. Why? Because you are intertwined with God. This everlasting God. This creator of the ends of the earth. Who never faints. Whose power never runs dry. Who's unsearchable in his greatness. And all you and I have done is we waited upon. We intertwined ourselves with him saying, God, I'm dependent on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm, my weakness is lost in your strength. My limitations are overcome by your my insufficiencies are overcome by your completeness, your greatness. I am lost in you. We are a people empowered by God. Amen. So wait upon the Lord. Intertwine yourself with God as you pray. You seek Him. You let Him know you are dependent on Him. We are dependent on Him. And He empowers our lives. Our God is greater. Amen. This morning, as you go from this place, I want you to know that God will work in your life and mine. In every situation, let's affirm our God is greater. Amen. And we know how He's going to come in and work in our situation. How? When we intertwine ourselves with Him. When we wait upon the Lord. We get empowered. We rise above the storm. We rise above the challenges. God will bring you victorious. Whatever you're facing. Whether it's in the workplace. At home. Your finances. Relationships. Whatever. God is great. Let Father, even as we stand here this morning in your presence, I pray for every person here, Father, that God, we will be intertwined with you. That each one of us, Father God, will be intertwined with you, God. That we will be supernaturally empowered with your strength, with your power, with your might. With your understanding coming into our lives, Father. So that it's not about our own strength or our own ability or our own understanding. But we are a people empowered by the great God of heaven. His power is available to us, is in our lives. His strength is in us. His understanding is in our hearts. And we are a people so empowered by God. So that we will rise up above. And mount up with wings like eagles. That we will be able to run without tiring. Walk without fainting. Father in the name of Jesus I speak over every person here. I speak the shalom of God into our lives. I speak the blessing of God into our circumstances. I stand against every assignment of the enemy. 
I stand against every evil work that may have come against us. I stand against every scheme of the devil. I stand against the calamities, the difficulties, the challenges, the mountains or the valleys. And I say in Jesus' name, let the blessing of God in wait. Let the works of the darkness be destroyed and cast off of our lives. And let the blessing of God invade our worlds, our lives. Bless your people. Prosper your people. Open doors for your people. Bring provision, God. Turn calamities around. Bring resolutions to difficult situations. Bring favor in unfavorable situations. Release your purposes, Father, for each of our lives. That the dream and the destiny and the plan you had for each one of us will be fulfilled. That the goodness of God will overshadow our lives because your word says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be seen upon us. Let the glory of God be seen in our lives. So that this great God will receive honor. Will receive praise through our lives. So be it, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. Let's close, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of our, God, our Heavenly Father. And the sweet fellowship, the communion of His Holy Spirit. Continue with each of us. Always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say this with me. My God is greater. My God is greater. Amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.